And welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Monday, March 19th. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain, and many of the stories read here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com. Hundreds of people from across North America were on the Onondaga Nation near Syracuse, New York this weekend to say goodbye to clan mother Audrey Shenandoah. Audrey Shenandoah, 85, a member of the Eel Clan, passed away Thursday morning, March 15th. Longhouse services were held on March 18th and her family and nation entertained guests from across the country and Canada. At Onondaga and across Haudenosaunee nations, Audrey Shenando was respected and revered for her knowledge of the culture and language. Quote, her work here on earth is done, said Orrin Lines, a faith keeper of the Onondaga Nation. She left a legacy of culture, language, and peace and service to all. Audrey Shenando believed language was the key to the longevity of the culture of the Haudenosaunee, also known as the Six Nations Iroquois Confederacy. She helped develop the first uniform written version of the Onondaga language and was the first language teacher at the Onondaga Nation School, a position she held for more than 30 years. She was a fluent speaker of the Onondaga language and understood the languages of other nations as well, which made her an asset to the Six Nations Confederacy. She held the position of secretary for the Confederacy for several decades. She traveled to the United Nations in 1977 and 1992 to address issues of environmentalism and indigenous people's rights and was the keynote speaker for the Global Forum of Spiritual and Parliamentary Leaders on Human Survival in Moscow in 1990. She received honorary doctorates from the State University of New York at Oswego and the Middlebury College in Vermont. Audrey Shenandoah was a faith keeper for the Eel Clan and was borrowed to serve as a clan mother to the Deer Clan as well in 1970s. She worked most of her life to preserve the Onondaga language and keep the traditions of her people alive, and that lives on. In November, Dr. Gail Dene Shikan came home. Her new life on the Navajo Nation's capital, about 60 miles from her family in Shinley, Arizona, marked the start of a, her two-year post as the tribe's new Surgeon General. It is a temporary departure from her work as Associate Professor of Family Medicine at the University of New Mexico and as Director of the School Center for Native American Health. This is coming home, she says. I, real, I really feel that I'm really working for the nation, the people. This is the first time I've really felt like that. She is the second person to hold that job after Dr. Taylor McKenzie, the first Navajo to earn a medical degree, passed on in the year 2007. As top medical officer, her goals are ambitious. She hopes to guide policy on Indian problems, excuse me, on health problems affecting Navajo, such as the high rate of diabetes and injuries. She will also tackle systematic issues of self-determination and access to data facing the tribe. Some Ojibwe in Minnesota are worried about the fate of the state's wolf population as state lawmakers consider a hunting and trapping season for the animals. Wolves were removed from the federal endangered species list last year and that upsets many tribal members. For many Ojibwe, wolves are important to traditional culture. Some believe wolves are sacred and they want to see protections continued. A painting of two wolves hangs prominently in the living room wall in Mary Favorite's home in Wabin on the White Earth Ojibwe Reservation. Favorite is a tribal member and a member of the Wolf Clan. That means many in her large extended family associate themselves very closely with the animal. Favorite considers wolves among her relatives. The U.S. Department of Justice says a lawsuit over the water rights of three major stream systems in southeastern Oklahoma should be heard in federal court. The Oklahoman reports that the uh, department filed a notice recently to remove the case from the Oklahoma Supreme Court. Uh, Attorney General Scott Pruitt sued on behalf of the Oklahoma Water Resources Board, asking the court to decide whether the state or the Chickasaw and Choctaw tribes had the right to use the stream and surface water. Leaders of the tribe say they're pleased with the move, while the Attorney General's office there says it's still reviewing that decision. Seneca Nation leaders have banned the sale of synthetic marijuana, bath assaults, and drug paraphernalia on the tribe's western New York territories. The Seneca said recently that tribal counselors approved the ban, but they say it had nothing to do with a federal law enforcement raid targeting such products on the separate Tonawanda Seneca Reservation last month nearby. 
Seneca President Robert Odawi Porter says the vote had been in the works for months and is consistent with the nation's anti-drug policy. The council voted to prohibit reservation businesses from selling things like herbal incense and bath salts that produce a drug-like high when smoked. The ban also includes pipes and clips used to smoke marijuana. And that's going to be another roundup of uh, news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank you for joining with us today by saying Pina Gigi and come back again soon.